To my left, we have Spinzilla. <laughs> and to my right, we have Glass Cannon. One pound ant weights, vertical versus horizontal spinning blades. This is going to be a nasty fight, ladies and gentlemen. Spinzilla, are you ready? Glass Cannon, are you ready? Three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight! Ooh. That looks like a nasty hit. Happy, are you ready? Three. Well, countdown. <laughs> oh, fire arrow gets knocked up, but it can flip right back over. These are veteran drivers, ladies and gentlemen. Several hours playing video games. You know the only it. way you can keep up with such agile robots. Fire arrow reinverts. A vicious hit. You might be wondering, how do you judge a match like this? Robots so evenly matched. Well, you can see aggressive aggression demonstrated by robots. Pins against the wall, demonstrating a strategy against the opponent. <laughs> oh, no. oh. Fire arrow is almost disabled on its own wedge, but is able to self right. Oh, nice! Puppy upside down and inverse wedge, not as effective. Start. Yeah. Fight robots, fight! <laughs> Dirtbot spinning up to full speed and then slowing down. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> They're a little shy. Oh, no. This is their first fight today. <laughs> Both blades still spinning. Dirtbot showing some innards. But the blade of Nocturne has stopped spinning. You tell These robots take a beating. You can see, sometimes, when you exert energy on your opponent, you exert energy on yourself. A durable robot must be able to withstand the hits of its opponent as well as itself. However, it also looks like Dirtbot is experiencing some drive to mobility problems. Doctor and eating into dirt bot like a jelly donut, getting onto that old cream filling.
Just break it. blades may be disabled, That's all but there is. <laughs> Nocturne demonstrating it's still functioning, fully functioning drive system. And now to prove me wrong. <laughs> What he said. Oh, it's a lot. It's hanging out. <laughs> All right, we're going to start a countdown. Unless, Dirtbot, can you show mobility? We're going to start a countdown at 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Match is over. Actually, it ended. All right, first robot. Sunblade, are you ready? Robo Rooter, are you ready? Three, two, one, fight robots, fight! Woo, sweet sassy molassy. You're not fighting the arena, you're supposed to fight the other robot. Roto Rooter coming at Sunblade, that's a hub motor. They've taken the innards out of a disc drive and turned it into a brushless motor with a feedback device. That really helped that arena. Sunblade, sitting on a shelf for four and a half years. All they did was put a new battery and start driving. The small little milling cutter hooked up to a brushless motor. Woo! Right in my face. Nice job. Feel the power in deep. Sunblade, just a simple wedge with a spinning weapon. Just keep that thing running. Roto Rooter, I don't know, that's really not very good technique. Roto Rooter's driving around Sunblade. This is a gyroscopic effect. What happens is when that weapon spins up so much, there's enough mass that won't allow it to just come down straight on the ground and keeps it for a procession off the ground. Sunblade, on the other hand, has a vertical disc, which makes it harder to turn the robot and harder to control. It doesn't appear that Sunblade's driving at all. The weapon's just running. All right, and we have a tap out from Sunblade. Rotor Rooter is your winner. That was awesome. Douglas 12, come on, little buddy, you can do it. So, we're just going to wait to see how long this thing will take to fall apart. Come on, Mondo Bizarro, bring the pain! <laughs> yeah! Feel the intensity, yeah! That's the power of Pine Saw, baby! Pine Saw? Why do you say Pine Saw? I feel clean. Yeah! Two, one! Fight, robots, fight! Robots more pen than robots. I'm sitting down eating a chickpea sandwich so I can't actually see the action. I'm going to call this all by sound during this match. Ooh, look at that hit! Fire air with some aggressive running away. That's a tactical runaway. Ken appearing not to do its job as... Oh! Cannon gets stuck on the floor anyways. Cannon's stuck in the corner. is made up of half-inch Lexan. That's a bulletproof plastic that is somewhat see-through when you don't scratch it a lot. At the bottom, we have a quarter-inch thick Whoa. steel bumper. These little robots don't have enough reactive energy in them to actually damage anything. When we get bigger, things start getting smashed. All right, we still got Fire Air running around. Fire Air, the name of the 1987 car from Plymouth. A front-wheel drive doozy of a hot rod. Not any exist because they were all made in a factory and then moved to the second factory for painting where they all rusted in between transportation. So we've got just under 50 seconds left on the clock. Fire Arrow still running away. Come on, Fire Arrow, bring the pain. 
The weapon on glass cannon no longer functioning. It appears that the pins or something have made it stop functioning. The weapon's mounted directly onto a brushless motor, which means instead of a robust drive shaft, it's got something like a two or three millimeter shaft. Very easy to bend. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what I was talking about. If you get it right, you can just jam the pin down to the edge and get that robot stuck. Doesn't look very good for John Parsons at this point. Last cannon with the last grasp effort. Spinzilla, are you ready? Ready. Sisu, are you ready? Three, two, one. And robots are driving around doing robot stuff. Robot talk. Spinzilla doing some Spinzilla E stuff. Sisu doing some Spinzilla E hitty stuff. It's so hard to drive according to Sisu. That's a bold goal. When you make a robot that only drives, it should drive well, not be hard to drive. We could be getting some interference from the Van de Graaff generator next door. Although everyone's running on 2.4 gigahertz by spectrum, it's hard when you have just an unregulated source of electromagnetic interference. In the 2009 movie Red Dawn, a remake of the 1989 movie Red Dawn, a large EMP knocked out of all of America's electronics. Very similar to that has happened here, as a lot of these robots are having trouble fighting the Van de Graaff generator. They don't provide the feedback that the controller needs. It's a bold strategy. I don't know if it's going to pay off. Come on, little guy, you can do it. Just go over where that other robot is. Come on, little buddy. Ah, oh, we have a discussion. Lucite versus Lexan. Where's our material science kids in the house? Who knows Lucite versus Lexan? Nobody, okay. Lucite is a very hard material. It's a plastic that looks similar to Lexan, but it's closer to an acrylic composition. That means the button's being affected by the Tesla coil, so we have to get rid of it. Okay. Fire arrow, are you ready? Okay, we have two robots ready. Let's go in. Three, two, one. Fight, robot, fight. Fire arrow, bringing it straight. And Spindel looks like the repairs all work. Both wheels driving. They've got a new red and gray hub, so they have the uh, Euro spec. Fire arrow. He's going to run very quickly. Fire arrow shows him to get more of his weight towards the drivetrain. Spinzilla giving most of his weight to the weapon itself. Weapon pretty devastating if he can get an aim right. This is a game of physics. When you have a weapon that spins like that, you have a rotating force. As you hit other things, you have a counter-rotating force. Are you able to steer and beat that rotating force when it just wants to keep going? I think the, the spinning no. one is winning because a bunch of pieces are flying over from the airline. Well, there's your problem. See that battery sticking out? We're going to call this match. All right. It's got to be cool fire. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Fire arrow pushing Spinzilla's battery into. Oh, no. He's so good. All right. Spinzilla's battery is stuck outside the arena. The robot is inside the arena. This is a first. Spinzilla now stuck in the wall in that crevice. Never give up. Come on, little buddy. Be better. This is embarrassing. Your mother robot will be ashamed. The rule of state, you need to show translational movement over a period of 10 seconds for a certain amount. Even though it's constrained translational movement, it is still translational movement. Hey, 
some good sportsmanship there. So we're just waiting for that spinning thing to hit their own battery and shut their robot off. Well, the battery's not inside. That's like when you take your stomach insides and put them outside. It's never a good thing. And that's the end of the match.